person. I'm just an archaeologist with a specialty in Bronze Age. And I want to tell about a project we had in a museum. And I'm working as an archaeologist in a museum, and it's very seldom, but we were lucky to get some research money to make studies about um, a certain area in South Denmark. Uh, we tried to anal an analyze uh, social context and try to understand Bronze Age networking and uh, human uh, relationships in a certain area. And we used different uh, sources, for instance, law texts, uh, rock carvings, and of course, uh, uh, macro fossil and uh, 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 radiocarbon to get uh, to try to find out how was the society working. And this is the uh, Bronze Age settlements in Denmark. We have uh, around 830, I think, registered uh, Bronze Age settlements in Denmark. Um, and an interesting thing is that we all say, and it's a general consensus about the importance of cattle and beef in the Bronze Age diet, we have many questions still open, for instance, where are the cattle? Because um, out of these over 800 settlements, we have, for instance, only registered site, uh, 16 sites with uh, signs of uh, stables. And uh, we still have the uh, open question about manoring and trade. In, in uh, southern Denmark, we have several settlements from the early and late Bronze Age, but we only have about three sites where we ad actually find cattle bones. Where are all these cattle gone? Um, another question is, did the Bronze Age uh, longhouses house the cattle? But uh, this aspect isn't fully investigated, and how can we find out uh, features which could relate to the handling of cattle in another way? I would try to suggest an interpretation of temporary cattle folds for certain features um, and talk about tree hay for the foddering of the, the cattle. And um, I'm going to show, show some interpretation on this. The map is showing the local uh, location of the site in southern Denmark. The red line is the border between Denmark and Germany. And uh, we in get investigated a site where the red stars marked. Uh, it turned out to be a, a cooking pit area where there were about three to 400 cooking pits covered a large area. There were no other constructions on this area, like houses or signs of activity. And we got the possibility to date, uh, radiocarbon date the cooking pits. Uh, 125 samples were taken. And we could see that um, the area has been in use for around 1,000 years, from latest uh, Neolithicum to early pre-Roman Iron Age. We had dated pits from all these uh, periods. The interesting facts for this presentation is also that we took out macrofossil samplings from every pit to analyze them. And one question, among others, were, could this material say something more was it only firewood we had, or was it possible to get more information out of it? Um, uh, as said, 125 samples got analyzed, and it turned out that there were only used twigs and branches with a max diameter of 5 cm. There were no signs of logs or pieces of bigger chunks of wood. That g gave an interesting aspect to the question about uh, cattle fodder. From the Netherlands, <coughs> it could be proven that we don't know by, about uh, hay, for instance, as feeding the cattle in the Bronze Age. Um, and the macro analysis uh, in the um, in, uh, Netherlands showed that twigs, leftovers from trashing, were in fact used for cattle. And on our South Danish side, we can see the same pattern in the macro fossil uh, material. So what kind of Charcoal was found in the pits. Uh, we found some uh, interesting distribution of tree sorts in the cooking pits. Um, they were analyzed to be twigs and smaller branches. And uh, these are all sorts of trees that are known as very good uh, fodder. 
especially ash and hazel are the perfect uh, uh, tree hay. Um, if we consider that this uh, cooking pit area had been an assembling place or, and was frequently visited, maybe one or two times a year, we would all uh, we must consider that a lot of people were coming there and they had to be served with food. Uh, they may have brought the cattle with them for for um, other purposes, of course, to trade or um, give away in rituals or whatever. And the cattle had to be kept nearby, maybe over two or three days, and fed. And our theory is that they were meant to be cooked in the cooking pits later on. But until this uh, time, of course, they had to be fed and keep. Um, we could imagine that people were bringing their uh, uh, firewood and the material was, could be used twice. If you take a lot of branches with you, you can use it as a uh, fire material, material and the, uh, the leaves from the, from the branches were used maybe to feed the cattle. Um, so if we think of, about how t uh, we could have kept the cattle in the Bronze Age. Uh, we presume that they were not uh, kept near the houses, but maybe were wandering around in herds. But actually, of course, sometimes they have to collect them and use them for uh, different um, um, assemblings or, or um, yeah. The moment the cattle got assembled and had to be kept near the community or the village, uh, they needed also a lot of fodder for them. And we suggest that these branches and twigs we found the leftovers in, uh, from in the cooking pits uh, shows that, uh, the, that the cattle were feed with this um, um, tree hay. Our uh, macrofossil botanical people could all also show uh, that the uh, twigs and branches used, uh, that the forest in the Bronze Age was used systematically and that all the resources were carefully uh, dealt with. I looked at ethnological parallels and it's shown that this work uh, was still carried out until, until the 1850s in the Alps and uh, in South Germany, where people collect the woods, uh, go into the woods and collect all the branches with the good leaf for to feed the, the cattle. Um, we suggest that the cattle was not kept uh, near the houses, but maybe was taken around uh, certain areas, uh, that, and that the, the access to the good grazing area were uh, shared and organized. In this area of uh, South Denmark, the landscape uh, markers, which are the uh, grave mounds, may uh, indicate where different groups had the right to graze. The keeping and herding of cattle could have been quite uh, different and not always the same uh, according to the weather and the resources. And uh, we are talking about mixed farming structures in this area. Um, we we uh, don't know how the cattle were surviving outside in the uh, winters. The suggestion is they were taken into the houses, but the houses actually don't show any um, any signs of, of these uh, features who could be stables. This is known from uh, later Bronze Age in the Netherlands. We find uh, signs of, of stable boxes, but we don't have any uh, really proven um, signs of these uh, in South Denmark. So we presume that the cattle has to find its father itself, also in the winter, and uh, they could have been maybe fed with the, the tree hay. The cattle has uh, been mobile just at, as other wares are human, and that was proven all, also by the strontium isotopic analysis carried out especially in the Netherlands and in South Germany. Um, the question about what did people then do and how did they keep this cattle near the houses brings us back to the assembly site in South Denmark. As I said, there were no house structures where were found 
uh, near the assembly places, but a few hundred meters away from the central spot of the site, we found structures like these. The usual interpretation says that we are dealing uh, with house uh, wall ditches, but there were no traces of post holes or other settings found in these uh, structures. We suggest that it, it's uh, cattle folds, which can be um, raised very quickly. The structures are found in contexts where we have either cut cooking pits, like assembly places or settlement with houses with no signs of uh, stable or boxes, compartments for cattle. And the slide shows different examples from uh, Danish settlements. They are all uh, very close in a radius about five kilometers from the uh, central assembly place. The shown structures are very similar to each other. Uh, the redrawing of the three cattle folds shows eye-catching similarities. These are from the, the tree uh, best preserved from uh, the area. The ditches are not deeper than 15 centimeters. No post hole were found, except uh, the example, the first example, there were very thin uh, posts put in the ditch. There were maybe about four centimeters, some small, um, um, traces of, of posts or just maybe twigs were put down in the, in the uh, ditch. The structure sizes are about uh, between 90 and 120 square meters and could easily contain about uh, 20, between 20 and 25 cows. The walls could maybe have been out of light weather or even just small branches put into the ground as known from ethnological uh, examples and okay, <laughs> have to speed up. So we think this could be uh, traces of uh, mobile cattle folds. When I was looking for parallels in uh, in other sources for this cattle fold, I found a very nice example from uh, the rock carving area in Montbego that shows. Uh, uh, a structure like this, it's interpreted as a cattle fold, even with a sign for cattle or bull inside of this. Um, and if we look at the outline structure from Riese Sönerbank, the, the, the farm place, the assembly site, the similarity again is uh, striking and gives the interpretation of a cattle pen even more arguments. Um, this slide shows, shows a similar rock carving from Old Bego, and the themes on the carving are depiction of a village and a kind of gardening, or a garden maybe, <coughs> and a cooking pit area. You can see the spots with a like, fence or something around it. <coughs> on the left, there are two cattle folds. The cattle in different designs are shown in the upper and lower part of the carving. The cattle is shown from above, you see the horn, the body, and the animal's tail. So, uh, some are used for plowing. The sizes of the depiction, depicted animals shows the importance of the cattle. Uh, the right side just uh, shows an example of the archaeology uh, structures as excavated in our, on our uh, assembling place. And uh, this is just uh, a geomagnetic uh, um, graphic about the cooking pits, how they were laying very in no no certain patterns of the chaotic field. The last uh, slide now just shows a reconstruction suggestion of a cattle fold, uh, fold from South Denmark, like uh, found in the archaeology uh, uh, finds. It's a temporary fold, not intended for stationary use. Because, because we think the cow kids were living in the grazing areas and in the woods and not in the houses. It's a light construction, easy to put up for certain events uh, when it was necessary to get, get, gather the cattle for feasting, trade, or cooking. Thank you very much for the reading and thank you. <laughs>